we're going to talk about simple trig equations, and we're going to have an equation like sine of theta equals one half. Let me make that a little clearer. And we're going to find all theta between zero and 360. And I, I put a unit circle up here, and you know where the sine of zero. I mean, the cosine of zero is one. The sine of zero is zero, and the uh, tangent of zero is zero. I've got the cosine, cos and sine tangents there on there of all the multiples of 90, and some. Uh, right triangles, because we're going to be dealing with common angles. Okay, um, so I want to find out what the sine of what angle will give me one half, and I want to find all theta between zero and th 360. Well, the first thing I know is that the, um, I look over here at this uh, 30 degree triangle, and if I sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so 30 degrees is certainly an answer, right? The sine of 30 degrees is one half. Now, the sine is also positive in the second quadrant. So the 30 degree reference angle, that would be this one right here, this angle here, that's also the sine of that angle will also give me one half, and of course that's 150 degrees, isn't it? 150 degrees, and that would be pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6 in terms of radians, okay? So what you do is you're kind of working backwards. You're not evaluating the sine of something, uh, some particular angle and getting a number. You're given the number and you have to find the angle and you have to work backwards. Okay, let's take another example. Uh, the tangent of theta uh, equals zero. All right, so we're looking for an angle whose tangent is uh, zero. We're looking for all angles, such angles, that are between, again, zero and 360. Well, I go over to my unit circle, and of course, this is the cosine, sine, and tangent cosine, sine, and tangent, I notice the tangent is zero here, and I notice the tangent is zero here. This is an angle of zero, and this is an angle of 180. So my theta equals zero degrees and 180 degrees, and in radians, that would be zero radians and pi radians, okay? Now let's do one more example. Let's do the secant of theta equals negative two. This is example three. The secant of theta equals negative 2. Well, I don't like dealing with secants. I'd rather deal with sines, cosines, and tangents. And I realize that, of course, the secant is 1 over the cosine of theta, right, equals negative 2. And this is 1 over cosine equals negative 2 over 1. I can flip both of these, and I can say the cosine of theta equals negative 1 half. So any thetas that will solve this will also solve this. So I can say what I'm really looking for. The cosine of what angle equals negative one half? Well, the cosine of 60 degrees, of course the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, the cosine of 60 degrees certainly gives me one half, but not negative one half. So I have to find the quadrant over here where the cosine is negative. All three of them are positive here. Only the sine is positive here. Only the tangent is positive here. and Only the cosine is positive here. So the second quadrant and the third quadrant uh, have negative angles for the negative uh, uh, ranges for the uh, cosine. Okay, gives give, gives a negative. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. In other words, I will get negative stuff when I put that those angles in there. It will give me a negative um, uh, answer. So what I'm going to do here is uh, well, the, the the reference angle is going to be 60 degrees. So the 60 degree angle in the um, second quadrant. Okay is going to be um, 120 degrees, would be one answer, and then over here it would be 240 degrees. So, and in radians, um, that would be two, uh, 2 pi over 3 and uh, 4 pi over 3. Okay, let me get that a little better. So, uh, the cosine of 120 degrees and the cosine of 240 will give me negative one half, and those are the only two angles between zero and 360. 